name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, welcome to this holy sacrifice of the Mass on this second Sunday of Easter, the Divine Mercy Sunday. Let us now look unto Christ with compassion, who is also love and mercy, and so that we may be worthy celebrating this Eucharist. We call to mind our sins. You raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. 
They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith, to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the, soul of your, the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, whose, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the dis other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand, and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Good morning. We live in a time of doubt. When will all this craziness all be over? Some are saying we need to end restrictions. Others are saying things are going to get worse. It is hard to figure out who to believe or what to believe. Doubt pervades our life. We are forced to think every time we want to leave the house. Should I? Will I put myself or someone else in danger? Why can't I go see my friends or relatives at this moment? Do I really need to go out and get this or that? Doubt. Plain and simple. Last Sunday we celebrated our greatest solemnity of the liturgical year, Easter and the resurrection of Christ. This past week, we also celebrated the octave of Easter, or the eight days after Easter that culminate on this second Sunday of Easter, or Divine Mercy Sunday. In looking back, the gospel readings that were chosen during the octave all reflect the resurrection. But more importantly, they show that those closest to Jesus also doubted and feared that their belief was misplaced. Maybe he wasn't quite what he said he was. On Monday, the gospel was from Matthew and spoke of Mary Magdalene and the other Mary running from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed. We also hear that all the chief priests assembled to spread the rumor that the disciples took the body of Jesus and hid it. It is remarkable that the last statement in this gospel passage says, and this story has circulated among the Jews to the present day. In fact, that story still circulates to this present day, claiming that the entire thing 
was an elaborate hoax. On Tuesday, from the Gospel of John, we hear once more about Mary Magdalene weeping outside the tomb, and she encounters not only two angels who ask her why she is weeping, but then she encounters Jesus, who tells her to go to the disciples and tell them what she had heard. Wednesday brings us to the Gospel of Luke and the famous story of the journey to Emmaus. Here we find two of Jesus' disciples traveling upon the road when they encounter Jesus, but do not recognize him because their eyes were clouded. They told Jesus about the events of the past few days and that they were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel, but they had lost their faith. It was not until the breaking of the bread that their eyes were then opened. Thursday finds the continuation of Luke's gospel, where the disciple of Jesus, the disciples of Jesus, were talking about what had happened on the road to Emmaus, and Jesus appeared in their midst and said, Peace be with you. And they were all startled, because they thought he was a ghost. He even had to show them his hands and his feet, and he had to eat some fish so that they would believe that he was alive. Friday, we return to the Gospel of John and find the disciples out fishing in the Sea of Tiberias. Of course, they couldn't catch anything until Jesus appeared. In this account, we still find doubt that this is, in fact, the risen Lord. At the end of the passage, it says, this was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. And during Saturday's daily Mass, we hear finally from the Gospel of Mark. Now, Mark tends to be much more to the point. In this passage, Mark quickly goes through the appearance of Jesus and emphasizes the fact that the disciples did not believe. In fact, he states it three times in this brief Gospel passage and closes with Jesus rebuking the apostles, but then telling them to go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Now we have today. We are presented with this gospel passage from John, famously labeled as the one with doubting Thomas. Now, I don't think that is a fair description of Thomas, and he's gotten really a bum rap throughout history as being the one who doubted. He was not the only one who doubted. I think every one of his disciples clearly doubted. They were afraid and unsure what would take place. They felt lost because the one they thought was the Lord was not. They didn't know what to do next. Remember, these were the ones that were closest to Jesus, had walked with him day in and day out since their calling three years prior. They saw his miracles. They heard him preach. They really got to know him, and he even told them what would happen. Yet all we see this past week and today is their constant disbelief. It is no wonder that we have trouble, that the world has trouble believing and embracing the life and teaching of Jesus. Those that were closest to him doubted, just as much as we do. It is no wonder that we also, in these crazy times, say, I believe it is truly part of our nature to doubt. Yet without fail, Jesus continues to come to us and reassure us that he is, in fact, the Word of God, made flesh who dwelt with us. He is the God that makes himself present in body, blood, soul, and divinity every time we are present at Mass, even when we are only spiritually present. The reality does not change. He knows of our disbelief and our struggles. He knows of our doubts, and that is why he comes and imparts his Holy Spirit on us through his divine mercy. Today we celebrate that mercy. We celebrate the reason why we have faith, 
And we celebrate in thanksgiving because Jesus Christ will never give up on us. He won't turn his back when we do. He won't lose faith in us even when our faith is lacking. He constantly invites us to return to him even we turn away and sin. He does not turn away during the dark times of doubt. Years ago, when I was ordained as a deacon, I was presented with the book of the Gospels. The bishop held one end of it, and I held the other. And he said these simple words to me and to all those ordained. Receive the Gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Those simple words have a profound meaning. It is not just the ordained that are given them, but all those who believe in Christ. We are given a wonderful gift in the gospel of Christ. And we are given unfathomable mercy at the same time, because Christ truly knows that there will be periods when we all become doubting Thomases. In reality, if we are to become true disciples of Christ, we must go through our own doubts. We must acknowledge our own weakness, just like those first disciples, and fall on the mercy that Christ offers us through his cross. It is through our weakness that we become strong. Remember, we have all received the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Through our baptism, we are commissioned, every one of us, as priest, prophet, and king. And it is through our priestly commission that we are all called to be his heralds. When we have our doubts, remember that we are never alone. Christ is there to support us. He is there to travel with us, and he is there to pick us up when we fall. So I leave you with these following words, spoken to the disciples as they were fearful and doubting in the upper room. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. In other words, receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Believe what you read. Teach what you believe and practice what you teach. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, may we all have the courage and belief to respond, my Lord and my God. Amen. Let us now together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, transubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for as men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate by the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, that Lord, giver of life, who proceeds to the Father and the Son. For the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess in one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now turn to the Father and plunge into his loving mercy that is greater than sin and evil, suffering, and death. In Jesus, we have the victory, salvation, and eternal life. We give thanks to the Father as we say. Our response is, Father, we trust in you. For the leaders of the church that experiencing the Lord's infinite mercy, they may witness and proclaim it to God's people. We pray, Father, Father we, we trust, trust in, you. in you. For our government, especially during this time of pandemic, like the apostles, they may attend to the needs of our communities with love and compassion, and that they may come up with prudent decisions to lead us out of this difficult time. We pray, Father, Father we, we trust, trust in you. you. For those who, like Thomas, who live in doubt and fear, that the peace and forgiveness of the risen Lord may strengthen them to face life's challenges and difficulties, we pray to the Lord. Father, we trust in you. For all of us who are tuned in our respective homes, that we may devout ourselves in making our family centered into God and immersed in the ocean of divine mercy and live together as ministers of the Lord's peace and reconciliation, we pray. Father, we trust in you. For all those who are at the front line of this global health crisis, we pray for all the healthcare workers, world leaders, and organizations that they may be enlightened and protected as they lay down their lives to assist those who are inflicted by this pandemic. We pray, Father, Father we, we trust, trust in you. For the intentions of our parish, especially for Karma Ben Indra, Don and Hannah Tilson, Rosina Belmonte, and Benjamin Los Badas, we pray. Father, Father we trust, trust in you. God, our Father in Jesus, you have shown us your boundless love and mercy. Teach us to love you in return, and trust our lives to your loving mercy and serve our brothers and sisters. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare our gifts, we thank our dear parishioners for continuing to mail their um, gifts and donations to our parish, and to those who would also want to um, contribute and give to our parish, um, um, by online giving, you may be able to find and see the link on our page. Thank you for your generosity. <laughs> May the brethren may sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your name for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. Accept, the Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord, but above all to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with a paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took the bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks. He said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing this sacrificial victim, but is that you will to reconcile us to yourself. Granted, we who are nourished by the body and blood of Christ, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and the glorious martyrs, and with all the saints in his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity the pilgrim church on earth, the servant Francis our Pope, and Mary our Bishop, the other bishops and the old clergy and entire people you have gained for your role. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, the merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, that in passing from this life get kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, to Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At a Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day your daily Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that for the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him. Takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on my way, but only say the word. Now pray to the Holy Virgin of Guadalupe. Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your Son, as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and world and for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away the tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, Teach us all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient in time. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother. Help of the seek and cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.